Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. And today I want to bring to you part two of our global staff life cycle assessments. Today we are going to look at qualitative data. Um, there were a number of questions that we looked at, and here's what we found out. The uh, most common development opportunities that we offer are in the spiritual, emotional, and relational categories. Um, next is biblical and theological. And as you can tell, the number there, 7984, that represents the number of responses. So in 84 countries, those three would be the most common opportunities offered for development. Not as much for professional. Um, so it would be interesting to kind of dig into that a little bit further and go, what would that mean for us? Or what does that actually match the need is the question. We apply these five E's, um, environment, equipping, exposure, experience, evaluation. The two strongest are equipping, not surprising, uh, and experience, that we learn a lot as we're doing um, the ministry. The two that are weaker or um, less common would be exposure, which means exposure to other leaders, and evaluation, which has to do with feedback. Um, how are we doing at giving the leaders that we work with um, feedback on how they're doing? That could be formal, like a, a 360, a global 360 for development purposes, or it could be informal. It's the conversation I have with my team every day and how do I help them grow in confidence and competence if they're not hearing how they're doing on a regular basis. We invest time and funds um, to develop team leaders, uh, by far the most common, that um, national leaders, a little bit less, specialist roles, mm -hmm, and team building. Um, roughly half of the uh, responses um, so the investment goes into team leaders, and most of them talked about investing in team leaders. The biggest barrier to development, time, funds, or competing priorities. And as you can see here in the general response, the highest rated one was competing priorities. Um, one of the VPs asked us to dig into that a little bit more, and so we um, divided it out by stage of country to find a very interesting result. Look at this. In stage one, um, maybe funding. In stage two, for sure, funding. And other was the highest category. Um, and then in uh, stage three, the highest was competing priorities and other. So there's a little more work that we could use to dig around and go, what is it that competes? with the priority of developing our people. This was a little bit more about leading with information and how do we use um, HR information to think about what we're doing. We have and use information to address seasons of life. Do we know how many staff we have who let's say are newly married or who are senior and who should be thinking who are thinking or asking questions about retirement. Um, it can tell us where we might need to focus a little bit more to meet the needs of our staff. Um, do we use information to identify the training needs of our staff? And this would come more from local movement indicators. You know, if you see something, let's say that looks like evangelism is um, not as fruitful as it has been, uh, can we find out from the staff on the field where it is they're running into um, issues? The audience and campus changes all the time. So this is kind of a way to get a gauge on how and when we use information to think about um, our training and equipping and to think about the needs of our staff. As you can see, um, let's say 41 or 42 of the participants in this survey said we do not practice this currently. Then we looked at future opportunities for senior staff. This is in the retention category. Um, 
roughly half of the uh, countries talked about a continuing involvement. Um, you can see the ones who have a clear retirement program, uh, volunteering as a way to participate. Some countries have mandatory retirement legally at age 60. And so how do people over 60 participate, right? Um, and then uh, through alumni uh, connections, um, this is what we found out in this category. Now, this was interesting. Which phase is the strongest? Um, if you remember from the quantitative data, we saw that onboarding was the strongest, and that was from the way the questions themselves were scored. When we asked national LDR leaders for their judgment on which phase is the strongest, they felt that development was the strongest. That was, let's say, roughly 25 responses out of 98. Um, the next would be onboarding um, as the strongest. Which phase is the most challenging? Um, half of the respondents said recruitment is the biggest, uh, most challenging right now, and development. So development is the strongest, development is the most challenging. I could agree with, um, with that second one. Which two would you like to um, most see improved um, in the next few years? And that was recruitment uh, and development. And we did have um, a few people um, who had more than one respondent in the country. That's why you would see more than 100 responses there. But that's kind of a um, very solid endorsement that here are two of the areas that we would like to spend um, time on improving. So that's it for qualitative data. I hope this is helpful. It gives you a little bit of a view on um, the what's happening around the world. Your regional leader um, will be looking at your regional results. And so you can have an idea of where you sit as a national LDHR leader in your region. And you can take a look at where your region, uh, where you are uh, benchmarking against global results. I hope this is helpful to you. Um, we'll be looking at digging into this data a little bit more to see what resources we can offer from global. Also curious to see um, what countries are really excelling in recruiting and development and what can we learn from them. So till next time, um, that's all for today. Thank you so much for your kind attention.